Hi there, AFI Movie Club. This is Jacob Aaron Estes, writer and director of Mean Creek. I'm really happy to be able to talk with you guys today about the film, um, and especially because uh, AFI is where this movie started, uh, produced by uh, re uh, AFI fellows and shot by an AFI fellow as well. Casting this role of Josh Peck was sort of the biggest task of, of making the movie. And there was a period where we couldn't find someone good enough to play George, somebody that could both embody the darkness and the lightness that he had to embody effortlessly. My name is George. This is the inside of my mind. He had to be likable and hateful all at the same time, which is a tall order, especially for a kid actor. I think Josh Peck at that time was 14, 15 years old. The way I approached working with kids turns out to be the way that I approach working with adults. And it's basically a process of not interrupting their creative, imaginative play state. I read a book about uh, working with child actors, one that I was told Rob Reiner read before making Stand By Me. And in this book, Theater Games for Rehearsal by Viola Spolin, he talks about how kids are extremely connected to their uh, imaginations. And the worst thing a director could do would be to, to get in there and stop that process. So I made a huge effort to get these kids to bond and to know what they were doing in the scenes and what their characters were in prep. But I backed off while they were acting and just observed them. Happy birthday, Sammy. Hi, George. Glad you can make it. You know everybody? Yeah, sure. Hey, everybody. Hey. What's happening, George? Hey, Georgie. Hi, George. George is extremely happy to be riding along with these kids, and he's making a little documentary film with his camera. No idea what's in store, whereas the other kids are extremely excited to get their revenge on him. And their whole big plot is they plan to initiate a truth or dare game where they dare him to strip naked and somehow throw him in the river and make him run home naked. And the other kids have no idea what's in store for them either. They don't realize that George isn't a villain. I've always been interested in the idea of the bad guy, not just being a bad guy, but having a heart and soul. And in this movie, really, there are no bad guys. Isn't that excellent? Oh, yeah, thank you, George. You must have blown your whole allowance on that thing, huh, George? How much you bagging a week now? 40? 50 bucks? It's very sweet of you, George. I got it at Funko. You can return it if you want. Oh, no, it's perfect. We spent a week together in Oregon before we shot the movie. I borrowed something from, I once heard Spike Lee say, and I, I had them all play a softball game together because his idea was that when you learn to play together, then you can play together as actors better together. But also we were shooting on a river. In a lot of ways, that was a dangerous situation. So we had to teach the kids CPR and make sure they could all swim. So we spent days doing stuff like that. And we also had cinematographer Sharon Meir and I, we brought the kids to the central locations and let, just let them walk around the space and get a feel for where they would play this stuff. And I remember a moment where all the kids kind of went off into different areas of the embankment. And remarkably, they all went to these places that resembled a storyboard that my storyboard artist, Jay Martin, had, had already drawn. It, it was kind of a magical thing. What have you been planning? We were planning on stripping you, throwing you in the river, then making you run home naked. <laughs> Ta-da! 
<laughs> it's not funny. Oh, it's super duper funny to me. Sorry, George. You're not sorry. I'm sorry. As an artist, I'm always interested in getting the audience invested in the sort of ugly violence that may ensue in a movie, making them feel complicit in that violence. And in order to do that, I had to make sure that the character that Josh Peck was playing was loathsome enough that the audience themselves would want to shove him into the river uh, and even possibly take a little bit of pleasure in seeing him start to drown, only to realize that their impulse to hurt him w was an ugly impulse. And I think by making the audience go through that process, you've really engaged them in a emotional experience that isn't very black and white. And, and speaking of dead fathers, I just remember my bonehead, white trash fucking donkey dick Marty got so fucking freaked when I started talking about his daddy. His Neanderthal drunk dad put a gun in his mouth and splattered his brains all over the wall. You know, I almost forgot that my mom told me that. She said his daddy splattered his brains all over the wall. I thought it was sad at first, but now I like it. The whole movie seemed to me to be about dealing with sort of gray areas and nuances of our impulse to be cruel and our impulse to punish. Also our impulse to be humane, which is the other side of Josh Peck that he's expressing in this scene on a boat where he is so happy to be invited out onto the river only to discover the true intention of his would-be friends. Uh, and then things get really horrible. Stop it! Oh, Marty! Oh, over the wall. George! Oh, over the wall! Shut the oh, fuck oh, up! Oh, oh, Marty. Oh, that's what happens when you fuck with Martini Blank. Martini Blank's friends back him up. That's the friends do fuck up. That's why you're in the water. When I eventually made Mean Creek, I made it seven years after I wrote the first draft. By the time I went out to go and shoot the movie, I had forgotten enough that I had a healthy distance from the material. So I was in a sort of discovery process again. I realized that that's the, the right place to be as a director, to be open, to not be attached to every punctuation mark and, and um, to just listen to what's happening and, and learn about a scene as it's on its feet in front of you.